to my channel guys. Today I would just like to run through a quick checklist of things that you guys will need in order to find your perfect property. Now when I say the perfect property, I do not mean your dream house. I mean the perfect property for whatever position you are currently in in your life. So are you a first time buyer or are you strictly looking for investment properties? There are so many things that we need to look out for in order to sway ourselves away from disaster investments. These are very important things and if we do find properties that are lacking in these areas, they are big question marks and and there are definitely things to weigh up and see whether it is really, really worth it. So I hope this is helpful for you guys because I want to do more helpful, practical videos on property because I know you guys love them. And I have a lot of knowledge in this area because of course my journey was not smooth sailing. So I have witnessed the worst and I've seen the best, which is what I'm in right now. So how did I find the perfect place for me? Well, let's start off with your actual property searching. Searching online so you're on right mood, seek plan, all those amazing places, right? You need to make sure you know what your budget is and what you can get in that budget. Now you wanna know what the worst is in terms of the least you can get and where and the most you can get and where. Now the most for your money is not just about the size. It's not just about the biggest property you can get in your budget, nor is it about the best area that you can get in your budget. There are other things. Please jot these things down because I'm gonna go through them really, really quickly because I don't want this to be a long video. So first of all, service charges and ground rents. Now, most of this stuff tends to sway towards buying a flat. You want a low service charge and you want a low ground rent. My ground rent is 10 pounds a year, which is virtually nothing. And then you want a service charge, which is really you want it under 1,000 pounds. For example, you have cleaners, you have repairs of the communal areas, maybe cutting the grass, all of these things are paid for with your service charge. And also you wanna make sure that these people are actually doing what they're meant to be doing so you're not just paying for nothing. That is another thing. <laughs> Moving on then, you need to know how much your council tax will be for the property. Are you in band A, B, C, D, whatever. And of course it goes up in price. You can easily Google this information by Googling the address and finding out what the council tax rate is or I think you can Google the council that the property is in and see what their sort of general rates are. I think it's quite estimated, so you'll never really know the exact, I don't think, unless you hear it from the actual previous owner or when the bills start rolling in. So you do want to know before that, so you are prepared. Now, these things are paid usually on a monthly basis. Now, if you have a big chunk of money at the beginning, it's probably best to pay those things off straight away. But if you don't, just remember that these are added on expenses on top of your mortgage. That's why you wanna make sure these are as low as possible before you say that this is your perfect property. Moving on, the next thing you want to find out before you even go to view the property is whether it is a freehold or a leasehold and the details of that. If you are buying a flat, it is usually going to be a leasehold, so you won't own the freehold, so you will be paying your service charge paying that off. Your leasehold has a value of years, an amount of years on it. If the lease is 80 years and under, do not even bother viewing that property, unless you have over 10,000 pounds upwards to extend that. Now, why I'm saying that is it's very dangerous territory. One, because you as a new owner are not allowed to extend the lease until at least living there for two years, which means the lease is going to go down to 78 years, which means to bring it back to 100 or plus years, you're talking tens of thousands of pounds which then devalues the property. The value of the property goes down along with the lease. So there are loads of instances where you have a flat in Chelsea which is like a million pounds in value really, but if the lease is really low, you can sell that for like 600, 500, 400, because somebody that's going to buy that now has to extend that lease to bring the value back up. Make sure that the flat you are looking at that is perfect has a lease over 80. You really just wanna be comfortable and at least get something 90, 100, 125, or 900 and odd, which is not very common down south, but if you can get that, you are onto a winner. Now, if you have a house on most occasions, you will have a freehold, which means you're not paying a lease, it's infinite. However, there have been instances with some new builds in particular, where people have not realized that in their contract, they actually signed up to having a leasehold 
house, which means you do not own the land that your house is on. You will also be paying a lease. You really want to make sure that the house you're getting is clear cut in the contract, that you are owning the freehold. Um, there are also instances where people in flats can come together and buy the freehold and then there's no lease. So research all of these things and just make sure that they're a good amount of years on it and make sure that you are getting the best for your money. So let's move on from all the charges, sad part, and let's move on to the value of the property. One amazing thing that I used to do is go on Rightmove and Zoopla, really good for this and finding out the old and previous values of the property, sort of what that property has sold for, just to get a track record of it. So if you're seeing that your property is up for 200 and you're like, that's great, but you go and see that actually last year it was sold for 100 grand, Hmm. So there are definitely things to look out for in terms of the history of the value and of the prices that it's been paid for. Not only that, but you can also dig deep and find out what other properties in the area, in the block, on the road have sold for in your year or last year or even in your month. I think about a few months later, it then gets updated as sold and the value that it was sold for. So do all of this research. I definitely did that. I knew that I got a bargain because the properties around me actually did sell for more. Make sure you are researching the property history and also the previous sales around the area. Now, talking about the area, you wanna make sure that the area is a commutable area. Just remember that at any moment, your car could give way and then you need a train or some sort of means of transport. Not only that, but people may be visiting you. It's just always, always very good to have a property near a station. Also for value purposes, just find out how long the commute will be if it is a commutable area. And if it's not, and it's in London, then fine, just make sure you're near a station. Also check parking in the area. Do you have your own designated parking spot? Do you have a driveway? What is the parking like? Do you have to pay for parking permits on your road? London or do you get to just park wherever you like also a lot of flats do come with garages another thing to check off your list before even going to view the property is find out the area information so it may be an area that you don't know a lot about which in most cases if you're going to start commuting that will be the case so do as much research as you can you don't want any nasty surprises when you get there but also you want to find out some good news if you are going looking in certain areas you want to make sure that it's going to bring you value in the future and be a great investment are there future plans in the area is there like a shopping center being built or a stadium or is there going to be major works is there going to be regeneration plans just so many things are happening outside of London to sort of bring more people to the areas, whether it be tourists or whether it be actually buyers and new families. You wanna make sure that you find an area that has a lot of potential or that has a lot of plans in the works. And also there may be bad future plans. You know, I know not everything's on Google, but you can dig. One thing that I really did do is dig and dig and dig and find out like I know things about my area that is coming next year or the year after because you have to be smart. And some of those plans I found out I won't even be here. I don't think I'll be here in those years. But I know that just the thought of those things coming and before they've even come, prices start rising. And so I'm never selling this property. I don't plan on selling it. So I know that it's going to benefit me in the long run. So make sure you think about future plans and also just the area in general. Sometimes an area on paper looks horrid, but when you actually get there, it's lovely. So just bear that in mind before you do sort of write a property off because of the area. Go and see it for yourself, definitely. Make sure the property has at least a corner shop or supermarket within good distance. Walking distance, drivable distance. Now let's get to the good part. So you've checked all of the other things off the list and they're all looking really, really good. It's now time to go and view the property. So I want you guys to go into this thing with open eyes and open heart and just an open mind because you never ever know what is going to come at you. Believe me, like you could walk into the house that is perfect for you, but you could be blinded because you wanted or you were so dead set on something that really didn't matter um, and you could miss out on a blessing. So you've checked all these things off, it's all looking good on paper, and now you need to meet it. Now you need to see if you gel well, if the vibe is right, if it feels right. First thing I say to you is make sure you have memory on your phone because you will need to take loads of pictures. I recommend you take loads of pictures of every single room in the property and the hallways and also do a video. I have actually got two separate videos of this property. One was on my first viewing when the previous people that lived here had all their stuff in it. 
And then the second one is an empty one when I got my keys and I walked around and it was empty and this room was purple and my living room was yellow and green and um, my office was pink and green. Not just for memories when you bought it, but also so that you can actually visualize where things are going to go, the layout of things so you can remind yourself of the property, especially if like me, you are going to be on a hunt and viewing a lot. And also you want to be able to compare properties because chances are you will forget a lot of details. I forgot so many things. I didn't notice so many things even when I was in the property videoing it until I would re-watch stuff and I'd be like, oh, there's a window there by my balcony, which means loads of light comes through. You know, things like that, that when you're in the moment, you're excited, you're sort of looking around this new space, you don't notice. And I think I will actually share those before videos and pictures soon. I plan to do a before and after and it's going to be epic. I know a lot of you have seen a few things, but you haven't seen anything yet. What I also recommend is get really friendly and chatty with the estate agents because they will spill. They'll spill information that you need, prod them and don't ever think that you're asking too many questions. This is a huge investment that you are doing. You ask as many questions as you need and you jot these things down in a notebook. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. You wanna walk through the whole property, open all the windows and make sure they actually work. Look up at the ceiling and see if there's damp or if there's issues or cracks. There could be structural issues from a crack inside. So you need to be aware of all these things before you purchase it. Open all the storage cupboards. I remember my first property, I didn't open storage cupboards and didn't even know they existed. You need to know if the property you are buying has a good amount of storage. Open it. If someone's got their house up for sale and viewing, look at the whole property. It's gonna be yours one day. You need to see these things. Is it gas or electricity heating? When you are viewing a property, it's great to start off with viewing it not empty, you know, viewing it with somebody there because you can ask questions. You want to dig deep. You want to know who your next door neighbour is and what they're like. Do they have children? Do they have a dog? If you have dog issues, you know, you need to find these things out. And what's amazing is that everything that I was told and researched on prior to buying this place is actually exactly the same, if not better, because when I say it's just so peaceful, I'm looking out my window right now and it's beautiful. So you wanna just make sure that if it's peace you're looking for, you are going to get peace. No matter how beautiful the property is, if it's not surrounded by what you need, it will be hell and you will want to move out very, very quickly. And it's not that easy to move when you own a property. This is a very, very, very big decision and you need to do as much research as possible before going into it. A great question to ask, and you can also find out here if someone is being shady or lying, you can ask how long the property has been on the market and you can compare that answer with the actual, you know, listing date. Because on these listing websites, it tells you when it came on the market. So if the person or the estate agent's being a bit shady, you know there's something not quite right. And that could be the fact that the property price that they've put it up is far too high and it's been sitting on the market for months. The first problem that I actually went to see that I really wanted. It's mad because I, I don't know what I was thinking. Thought the price was perfect. About five, six months um, when I actually bought this place, it was still up on the market for the same price, you know? Now, there was reasons why the lease was low. The property price was far too high. You know, the rooms were small. So you wanna make sure that there is transparency. Also, if it's come off the market and come back on, ask questions about that. Why did it come off? Because a lot of the time, the person that went and put an offer in it and then got accepted, the next stage after that is um, valuing the property. If the valuers come to the property and say, no, it's not worth what that person's put in, then um, the bank won't lend the money and then the person has to cancel going ahead because it's not worth it. And that is what I think I explained to you guys a bit in my first property video, that that's what happened to me um, before this one. How many viewings it's had, how many offers it's had. And I think that's gonna be a separate video. I'm gonna do a video on offers and you know getting successful offers and techniques and things like that because I definitely learned a lot in that area. So there are a few key questions that you need to ask before you put an offer in on the property and I'm going to just list them below very quickly. The first thing is to find out what the seller's time frame is. You could be really in an urgent position where you want to act very fast but the seller is quite relaxed and that could be a big issue if you go ahead with it expecting a really quick sale and the seller is just relaxing. So make sure you are both on the same 
same page and you can find this out from the estate agent does this person want a quick sell because i want a quick buy so what sort of time frames are we thinking are we thinking one month or two or weeks what is it going to be you need to have an agreement because then your solicitors will talk and agree on dates for exchanges and completions so you want to make sure from the beginning that you're you know heading in the right direction also just to come off the back of that does the property currently have tenants in it and if so what are their contract details you know when does their contract end what is their notice period do they have two weeks do they have two months the tenants that lived here had two months uh, notice and at first i was like oh my god i can't do this but it actually worked out amazing for me because I had two extra months, which really did fly by. I was able to save more and getting an even better position by the time I did buy it. So it worked out for me. And if you are in a situation like that, it could work out better for you. Email, email, email for proof. Please, if you have a conversation on the phone with estate agents or whatever, make sure you follow up with an email with regards to what we just discussed and highlight the things that you have discussed in an agreement and get them to respond on email agreeing to those terms, okay? That is just a pointer that I learned along the way. You need to find out whether you are going to be in a chain. Is the person that you're buying the property off also going to be buying a property and so waiting for that property to go ahead before they can move out? You need to find out whether there is a chain going on because that can delay things, that can complicate things. And if the timing is not right, someone's gonna be paying extra for where they're living. The last question is just to find out whether you can view the property again. I would never ever say just to view a property once and then that's it. So if people cannot come with you who are important to you, you know, it could be your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mum, your dad, whoever, at least you have some footage and some evidence to show them. Do you see where I'm going with this? You need other people's opinions. Yes, it is your property, but some people can spot things that you have overlooked. So you wanna be able to view the property more than once. So make sure you get that across to the estate agent so just make sure that you ask as many questions as you can and don't just ask the questions get the answer and move on because believe me it's very easy to forget all of the information overload make sure you jot these things down type them up put it in your notes i'm always speaking from experience when i talk about this stuff and so i get very passionate and really love just reliving my experience and this was filmed due to popular demand of you guys asking me what things to look out for to find the perfect property for you at this time of your life. Not the dream property. We will all one day get that dream property. I have not got my dream property. I have my dream property for right now, 100%. Whatever it may be, there is a perfect property out there for you. And I just want to help you guys find it without going through a process, buying something and having more issues that need to be fixed then enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will speak to you all very, very soon. Remember to subscribe and like and comment. Bye!